and Queens, Sandra Fenwick, your mortgage consultant here. Um, coming on this morning, I'm a little under the weather. So parents, I, I did the best I could to put myself together today, baby. Uh, I'm, I got on tights and a tank top and, and, a, and a cardigan. <laughs> so I'm at the, at the office and I barely have a voice. Um, you know, there's a virus going around and the kids are, um, the kids have been sick. So everybody over the weekend that I spoke with with kids, they were all sick. And um, my daughter was sick. She came home Thursday with a really, really high fever. She started off saying she, her tooth was hurting. I'm like, I never seen a five-year-old with a toothache. So um, I figured, okay, she's just teething, you know, it's almost that, I mean, you know, it's almost that time for her baby teeth to start coming out. And I was like, and, but none of her teeth was loose. And I'm like, I looked at her gums because sometimes you can see uh, a tooth pushing through to push one out, even though it's not loose. I didn't see that. So I'm like, hmm, okay. So then the next morning she woke up like she was on fire. Like her temperature was at least 103 um, for the next couple of days. So I called her doctor Friday and was like, hey, you know, she got a temperature, but she didn't have any other symptoms like cold symptoms. She did. She wasn't coughing. She didn't have a runny nose, wasn't sneezing, just a fever. Um, so the fever was so high, it made her miserable. Like she would just lay down and sleep. Like she was talking in her sleep and I, like her fever was bad. So the doctor said that, um, there's a virus going around. She's had an uptick of patients calling, um, of parents calling same, same kind of symptoms. She said the, um, the fever is going to last a couple days. And um, she said after the first two days, then they'll start getting cold symptoms like the runny nose, cough, stuff like that. Um, but if it goes on more than four days, then I need to bring her in. So my sister's kids, um, they had vomiting, nausea, diarrhea, fever. Um, my daughter didn't have that. Um and then um, my girlfriend was watching her niece and she was vomiting fever. So I'm like, okay, this gotta be the same virus. Of course, Saturday, I started having stomach issues and just feeling queasy. And um, and I feel like today I still, I feel worse. Like, so I said, I'm gonna fast for a few days, like nothing but water and ginger tea. Um, to see if I can heal my body on my own. But today, I feel terrible. I still got up and came to the office. Set or set. I'm still getting on, trying to give you guys some knowledge. So let's talk about what I got on here for. I ain't come on here to tell y'all all my business. <laughs> but just wanted to give a heads up to the parents. Um, if your child is sick, don't panic. It's a virus going around. It lasts a few days and it'll be over. Just pump them kids with that Tylenol, like what journey I had to give her Tylenol and then alternate with ibuprofen, Tylenol, ibuprofen, a ice cold rag on her head and on her neck. Um, that's the only way I was able to break that fever. It was, it was scary. So if, if you have children and they're showing those signs, there's a virus going around. Um, that a lot of kids have, so don't panic. Um, I know a lot of parents like to run their kids to the hospital, you know, for a fever like that. That's, that's scary, but it is something that's manageable. Just keep that fever down. Um, but keep yourself protected too. Wash your hands. <laughs> Stay as far away from the babies as you can, if you could. Uh, take your vitamins. Um, so, uh, what I wanted to talk about was retire using your retirement funds to buy a house. I just came across this video and this guy was talking about it, but, um, he was based in Canada. So he talked about an account called RRSP and I'm like, what the heck is that? 
So I Googled it and that's the um, Canadian savings plan. So I'm like, oh, okay, that's the same thing we have here. But a light bulb went off because a lot of people don't know that they can use their savings account or their um, retirement account to purchase a home. The great thing about that is that that money is sitting there accumulating um, interest. You're paying into it every pay period, um, which is great. But you can actually borrow your down payment and closing costs um, from your retirement account at work. So instead of you taking the money out, losing that interest that you're going to get on that, you can borrow against it and they're going to take your payment out of your check every two weeks. So that's a great resource because what I tell people is um, no money is free money. Down, most of the down payment assistance programs um, require repayment um, and they require it at a cost. So a lot of times borrowing the money from your retirement account is a way lower interest rate than borrowing it from a bank. Um, and it's it's fast and it's easy. They're taking it out your check every two weeks and you can um, write it off on your taxes. So that's a great opportunity to be able to come up with the funds because Yes, you can get down payment assistance. You can borrow down payment assistance, but uh, you do have to have money up front. You have to be able to pay your earnest money deposit in your um, your appraisal, your home inspection, sometimes a reinspection, um, and some other small fees will come up in this process. So to be able to pull out the cash from your retirement account, then you have money to cover all of your expenses. And then you have money to um, to close your loan. Great news is banks allow it. Um, they they are okay with you doing that. And um, that payment, the repayment for borrowing from your thrift savings account or your 401k or whatever retirement account you have, um, is going to be lower. So it won't affect your debt to income ratio too much. So if you were thinking, oh, man, I want to buy a house, but I don't know where the money is going to come from, pull it out of your retirement account, but borrow it from your retirement account. So you're still building towards your retirement. You're not taking money out of your retirement. You're still building interest on the original balance in your retirement account, but you're taking a loan against your retirement account. So check with your HR because there are some jobs. I know a lot of D.C. employees have that thrift savings plan and they can't borrow from it. There is a lot of different variations of the TSP. Um, so check with your HR department to see if you will be able to do that and to be able to use that account. Because if you've been working for a D.C. government for years, I've seen people have over $100,000 in their TSP. Um, but some people can't touch that money. So talk to your HR, see one, if you can, what the terms are uh, for repayment. And because um, a lot of times they may not let you borrow for personal reasons, but they'll let you borrow to buy a house. So you let them know specifically you're buying a house, you want to borrow from your account to pay um, your closing costs and your down payment. Um, and let them know that specifically, um, not just I want to borrow some money from my TSP. Um, buying a house, and I had this conversation with one of my clients because we were going back and forth and he was saying, uh, I just want a place for me and my kids to live. Never, ever, ever look at purchasing real estate as just a place to live. Yes, you're going to need to live there. You need a roof over your head, but it is an investment. So what you're doing when you're taking money out of your retirement account, you're taking your active invested money from one active account to another asset that's going to earn you money at sometimes a higher rate of return. So think, keep that in mind. This is an investment. This is not just some place you're going to live. You don't even have to live there for um, 20 years and, and, you know, and then pass it down to your kids. 
if you see that this neighborhood is gaining value, you've put a lot of assets or you'll put a lot of renovations into your house. You've added a lot of value and equity to your house. You can sell that house, pull that hundred, two hundred thousand you just you just put into it and take that buy your next house you know usually your first home and it's specifically for first time home buyers because most people that are not first time home buyers know that they can do this but your first home is usually not your forever home so uh, most people stay in their first home for an average of five years you can earn a lot of equity in your house for um that five years so and even if you buy a fixer upper as a home, you can borrow from your TSP. You can borrow, you know, a little extra money from that or from your savings account to do the renovations you want at the beginning of you live moving into your home. So retirement accounts, cash value life insurances, mutual accounts, it's um it's mutual fund accounts, those are all investment accounts that you're building money and savings in if you say no i don't want to come i want to touch my savings and i don't want to touch my retirement you first borrow from it secondly you're taking that money and putting it and just parking it in another investment vehicle you're not taking that money to go rent an apartment you're taking that money to buy an asset that's going to work towards your um your um wealth building your wealth is going to be towards your net worth okay if you have any questions about buying a house using your retirement funds give me a call 301-965-1155 thank you guys for joining talk to you soon bye have a great day y'all pray for me i'm i don't feel good i'm tired bye